Good day everyone, Waterfly Squad, welcome back to my Thursday Trip Report. If you're new to my channel, be sure to hit that subscribe and bell button now so you don't miss out on a new video which comes out every Thursday 12pm Hong Kong time. Today I'm flying Malaysia Airlines from Hong Kong to Kuala Lumpur on board Airbus A330 300 Business Class. Malaysia Airlines fly three times daily from KL to Hong Kong, with one being A330 with flat bed and another two being 737 with recliner seats in business class. Upon check-in, the ground staff told me to use the Cathay Pacific or Qantas lounges. I decided to go with Cathay Pacific the bridge today because I've not been there for ages even though it's not the best Cathay lounges in Hong Kong. I flew Singapore Airlines for the first time just last week. Check out my SQ review. Video link is in the description down below. I usually walk instead of taking the trains within Hong Kong airport, but I don't have much time today for chilling and relaxing, so I'm taking the train. Once you get off the train, you'll see the entrance for the bridge, which is usually quite unique and beautiful. Because the bridge is so conveniently located, it's also very crowded inside. This is the buffet area with a great variety of Western and Asian delicacies. My favourite thing in this lounge is those egg tarts. I have a question to you all. What's your favourite lounge in Hong Kong airport? Please share your thoughts in the comment down below. Your answer is not limited to a one world lounge. Hello from Cafe Pacific, the bridge business class shower room tour. You have unique products right there from Adelaide, Australia. And then you have a box here. There's a hairdryer, toothbrush, toothpaste and other amenities. You have some charges, uh, power socket I mean. Shower space is huge. That's the door with a mirror on it. The toilet seat. So overall it's a very nice spacious shower room. It's just that it's a bit dark here. I don't quite like it. So usually I go to the pier or uh, Qantas one. Please hold the handrail during the whole journey. I didn't actually have time to take a shower because I have to take another train ride to the departure gate which is located at the satellite building. All Malaysia Airlines, Virgin Australia, Hong Kong Airlines and several other airlines flights depart from this very building. This is our aircraft today. It's a six-year-old Malaysia Airlines Airbus A330 309M MTK. Just now we received a very warm welcome on board and for my seat today I chose 6K which is one of the three throwing seats on board this plane. The seat configuration on board is 121 and 122. It alternates every roll. I'll jump into the seat features right now. On the side you have a very large table and under the table you have a storage compartment where you can put handbags. You have a TV up there and under that you have a pouch where you can put small loose items. On the side you have this little shelf and I use it to put rubbish there. And then you have a tiny compartment bin with a tiny mirror door. Here's another pouch, it fits your boarding pass and regular sized iPhone. My iPhone 8 Plus won't fit in there. Here are some seat control buttons, USB port, headphone jack, TV remote and a reading light.
You also have a universal power socket and a seat pocket. Finally, there's a coat hook in front of you. Every business class passenger can expect a economy class pillow, blanket and a comfortable headphone but not noise cancelling. Just before we push back, everybody received a welcome drink along with a hot towel. You can choose apple, orange or guava juice and water. The crew have just handed out menu cards and wine lists, and here's a quick look at them. Before long, we pushed back taxi to and took off from runway 25 left. Please enjoy the takeoff footage. We all love mood lighting, don't we? It looks so nice even during a day flight. And now let's take a look at the entertainment system. The touchscreen works pretty good. The movies are quite up to date, but there's not a lot to choose from. I go to cinemas quite often while on the ground, so I recommend downloading some movies on your own devices before you fly. The flight map is not interactive, but the slides do change quite quickly. You won't get bored staring at one page. The meal service is about to begin and we'll have to take out the tray table. 
It's located behind the seat control buttons. It can be a little bit hard to take it out and it's going to be tricky for those who are first time flyers. You can move it around but you still can't walk down to the aisle. Right now the friendly cabin manager is serving us drinks and mixed nuts. Personally I'm not a big fan of those mixed nuts. I prefer peanuts from economy class. For drinks I've got a hot cup of green tea and I'll have the legendary tea week later. Here come the satays. You have a choice of, I believe, chicken or lamb. And you can also choose to have the peanut sauce on top or aside the satays. They are no doubt super extremely very delicious. Finally we get to try the satay. I've got chicken here. The actual meal came later, it's a bowl of salad, it also comes with a glass of water, my beautiful te tarik and a bread of your choice. The salad tasted really good with the sesame dressing. Here I have te tarik again. It's burning hot, but I love it. <laughs> for my main, I opted for the chicken rendang. It looked amazing, but it tasted pretty average, to be honest. The chicken and the sauce didn't taste like the normal chicken rendang I have in Malaysia. However, the rice was really good. It was moist and definitely tasted better than the boring plain white rice. For dessert, I got Haggadah's Belgian chocolate flavoured ice cream. It was rocky hard as always. The crew come by quite a few times to refill drinks. Hello from Malaysia Airlines, Airbus 83, 3300 business class lavatory. It's pretty standard here, but you've got this thing to spray, which is nice. Not very big here. Our in-flight manager today is a very chill and friendly guy. He smiled for the entire four-hour flight. <coughs> it's a four-hour flight down to Malaysia, so there's about an hour or so to sleep after the meal service. The concept of throne seat is fantastic. It's very private and you have lots of storage space and compartments, and you feel like a king or queen when you sit down. But the leg space is very limited once your seat is in the bed mode and I had to sleep on my side in order to sleep well. It's totally fine for this short flight but for any longer flights I would avoid those seats and go for the normal window seats on the left hand side of the plane. We're beginning to descend into KL, so let's conclude this short flight with Malaysia Airlines right here, right now. Once on board, I received warm welcome from a few cabin crew. Once everyone had taken their seats, they offered welcome drinks and hot towels. The meal service was flawless, you get a drink and nuts, and then satays, followed by starter, 
hot meal and finally dessert. The satay and salad tasted really good. The chicken rendang can be a bit more authentic I reckon, but don't get me wrong please, it was really nice. I just thought it could be better. The cabin crew on board were awesome and polite. I particularly liked the cabin manager who was very friendly and smiley. Overall, it's been a very good flight with Malaysia Airlines and I would love to fly with them again very soon. Thanks very much for flying this Malaysia Airlines trip report and here we are One World Flyer Squad. Share your journey with me with this hashtag and please don't forget to like, comment and share this video. And it's never too late to subscribe now if you haven't done so. Your subscription will motivate me to do more videos like this one. Thanks again and I'll see you again next week, Thursday 12pm Hong Kong and Malaysia time. See ya and terima kasih. Thank you very much. You're a